For decades, smog was seen as the inevitable price of economic development. It has been the bane of areas from London to LA, from Germany's Ruhr Valley to Yokaichi in Japan. However, in only a few decades, China went through the industrialization process, which took place over the course of several centuries in developed countries. So how will China achieve a balance between economy and environment? Beijing has long been regarded as a city with dirty air, but things often turn out different than what people might expect. Beijing's mean density for small particles has gone down by almost 50% since 2013, reaching 46 micrograms per cubic meter. This has never happened before. So how did China improve the air quality in such a short time frame? Rewinding six years to January 2013, four major waves of smog hit 30 provinces in the country, with readings of PM 2.5 maxing out in many cities, reaching a 52-year peak. Later in September, China passed a Clean Air Action Plan, officially declaring a war on smog. Like many developing countries, China has relied on coal for energy for a long time. Households in the northern regions were burning coarse coal to get through winters, which releases large amounts of sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides, and fine particles. To reduce these pollutants, the government has taken steps to replace coarse coal with superior quality coal. At the APEC Forum in 2014, China promised that renewable energy, such as wind and solar power, would comprise 20% of its energy spectrum by 2030. Apart from these energy reforms, China also laid down regulations on vehicle emissions. As its economy has grown in the past 40 years, the number of cars on the road has also gone up, and ozone pollution has been a serious issue in summer. Therefore, many cities have restricted emissions by top contributing enterprises. Since 2014, China has already replaced more than 20 million outdated vehicles that fall short of emission standards, while also gradually improving gas quality. The battle against smog would not be efficient without transparency. In 2013, a network of air quality monitor stations was put in place to track six common pollutants in real time. Local governments issue warnings when the pollution becomes serious, even shutting down schools when necessary. Emissions by major enterprises can also be tracked online, which encourages public participation. How was this series of measures worked out? This is a density map of nitrogen dioxide, where the blackish red color represents heavy air pollution. As you can see, pollution levels reached a peak in 2013. The air quality has subsequently improved even in winter, when public heating is distributed. Although some progress has been made, there's still a long way to go. China needs to attack this invisible enemy according to its own circumstances and make blue skies a normal sight for everyone.